Welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. First, I just want to take a moment to say our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in the path of and affected by Tropical Storm Florence, including my own sister and her husband who live just outside of Wilmington. To everyone, please stay safe. We'll have an update on the storm at the bottom of the hour. And as always, a big thanks to all of you for once again making justice number one last weekend and for making liars, leakers, and liberals continue to stay on that old New York Times bestsellers list. We have a big show on deck for you tonight with House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Governor Mike Huckabee, Tom Fitton, Carter Page, to name just a few of the great guests that we have standing by. But first, my open. Now, tonight is more than an open. It's who I am. It's what I know and what I did for over three decades as a prosecutor, superior court judge, as well as elected district attorney. The way it works is you are innocent until proven guilty. Clear, unambiguous words etched in stone. Why would anyone ignore this truth? especially the ranking Democrat on Senate Judiciary, Senator Dianne Feinstein, is stunning. But you shouldn't be surprised. The left is committed to the removal of a duly elected president, the destruction of our system of capitalism, and now an all-out assault on our system of justice. To them, you are guilty. Guilty until proven innocent. But no one in all the years I spent in courtrooms has ever been able to prove a negative. So forget the time-honored notions like due process, probable cause, beyond a reasonable doubt, or a jury of your peers. Today, unsupported, uncorroborated, untested words, not facts, are sufficient to convict not just in the court of public opinion, but in the esteemed, hallowed halls of the United States Senate. Forget the right to counsel, the ability to defend yourself, the right to confront your accuser, or even cross-examine your accuser. Truth in this scheme is nothing more than collateral damage if a Republican is on the receiving end of an anonymous allegation. So, Owned Diane, it. let me see if I get this. Another Democrat, a congresswoman from California, no less, forwards a July letter to you containing a completely unsubstantiated claim that Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, while in high school, tried to force himself on another high school student almost 40, I said 40 years ago. Kavanaugh, for anyone who even cares, has categorically and unequivocally denied the allegation. So, why are we just hearing about this now? Diane, when you get the letter, what do you do to make sure it's real? That the person is even real? Given the left's penchant to buy fake dossiers, make up facts, and collude with the media to sabotage even the President of the United States, Forgive me if I think it's all hogwash. Okay, you say, quote, the individual strongly requested confidentiality declined to come forward or press the matter further, and I have honored that decision. Diane, you honored that decision? Did you even speak to this alleged person? Did you meet with her, talk with her, interview her? Did you ask, did you ask her to meet with others? Did you ask why she said nothing for almost 40 years? And Diane, why would you wait to even send it to the FBI? Is it because nothing in you and your pack of demon rats, that's what I said, demon rats, AKA Democrats, bag of tricks, was working against Kavanaugh? Nothing was working that you were doing, beginning with Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and every unhinged, unhinged lunatic you could find. Of Mr. Judge Chairman. Brett Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman. To serve as Associate Justice. Mr. Chairman, I'd Supreme like to be recognized for United a question States. before we proceed. Order. You're out of order. I'll proceed. We cannot possibly move forward, Mr. Chairman. I with extend this hearing. a very warm welcome to Judge Kavanaugh. We have not been given Kavanaugh an opportunity to have a meaningful to his wife, hearing Ashley. on this nominee. 
<laughs> their two daughters. Mr. Chairman, I agree with my colleague, friends. Senator Harris. Mr. Chairman, Judge we received 42,000 documents that we haven't and been everyone able else joining to review us last today. night, and we believe this hearing should I know be postponed. This is an American people. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. To directly from Judge Kavanaugh. I Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. And Diane, you've been sitting on this letter for almost two months. You let Brett Kavanaugh go through days of Senate hearings, meetings with senators, answer then an additional 263 pages of 1,300 follow-up written questions. And now you want to character assassinate this man who's undergone six FBI full-field investigations where no such allegation resembling this anonymous nonsense has ever surfaced? Diane. As the ranking member of the committee interviewing Kavanaugh, how could you possibly let a moment pass without addressing the issue when Kavanaugh was right in front of you and would have had the opportunity to respond? What were you thinking? Are you stupid? Why would you let it go? Let me tell you why you'd let it go, Diane. Because even you didn't believe it. What other reason could there be? Now, I know about women who've been sexually assaulted and the kind of pain they go through. It is different from other crimes. It lingers and rears its head throughout their lives. I have prosecuted on their behalf for decades. And one of the ways that we establish their credibility is with how recent their complaint is. A recent outcry is enormously powerful. An anonymous one almost 40 years later? Not so much, Diane, but silence? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You bozos in Congress actually had a fund of taxpayers' money, our money, to pay congressional staffers who were victims of sexual misconduct by your coworkers. It's a fund that even you as a woman, a powerful senator, kept quiet about. Whose side are you on? Does it depend on politics? Does it depend on the politics of the accused? Your audacity to destroy and try to destroy a man with impeccable credentials, harm his family, and shift the burden of proof to the accused by alleging one of the most heinous allegations imaginable shows your complete disregard for truth, justice, and the American way. And that's my open. Do you think Dianne Feinstein is a liar, leaker, or liberal, or all three? There's only one way to find out. My new book, New York Times number one bestseller, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. All right, joining me now with reaction to my open and to discuss the vital issue of conservative censorship, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, uh, Leader McCarthy, Chairman, thank you very much for being with us. Now, who needs the Constitution yes. or a system of justice when after all these months, after Brett Kavanaugh has been in the public eye and under scrutiny, and Dianne Feinstein, the 11th hour, says, hey, I got this anonymous letter almost 40 years ago. He sexually abused somebody, but we're not going to, we didn't bring it up until just now. What took them so long? Well, you made the great point, Judge, that she waited till after the hearing. Think about all that time. But this wasn't the only hearing this judge has gone through. Remember, he's gone all the background checks by working in the White House. He's been appointed a judge, so he had to go through there right. as well. It's never came up. And why would they wait till after? But also remember, Senator Feinstein, her own body person, her driver, we found out worked for the Chinese government. You're right. And we didn't find that out for a couple of years later. So remember what we're dealing with here. This is politics. This is how far this country has split apart. Whereas they would print, just as they, the New York Times, an anonymous letter without a name. So now they're going forward with this. This is the wrong thing to do by the wrong person. I mean, if you watch that entire hearing, we have one senator who thinks he's Spartacus because he's releasing information that's <laughs> already been released. Booker. I mean, time and time again, they... Yeah, they, they embarrass themselves. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is not where we're going. We have three separate branches of government. This 
Judge Kavanaugh has been through every scrutiny there possibly has been. I thought the way he handled himself yeah, he was with all the uprising, the number of people that would try to break it up and get arrested just to be on television. And mm -hmm. He had a mind, which I think I want somebody on the judge like that, understands the Constitution and kept his head and answered the question. Well, you know, it really is shameful, but I guess they shouldn't be surprised given what they're doing to even the president. But I want to move on to something that is incredibly important and that I want to continue to talk about going forward after tonight. And that is the uh, uh, Google, Twitter, Facebook and what has been going on. You are at the tip of the spear in Congress as it relates to getting Google to come before you and answer some questions. Why and how far are you getting? Well, understand this, Judge. I actually am the founder with another uh, congressman, uh, Patrick McHenry, on the Innovation Initiative. I believe in technology and, and I come from California, but I do not like bias towards conservatives. So this is something we've been working on some time. We've got the CEO of Twitter who came before us, where I give Jack credit, where he did admit that they did shadow ban conservatives, where he came out this Explain week and he said, Explain what you mean to my viewers. Sorry, Kevin, Kevin, not feel free. Uh, Kevin, sorry. Explain to my yes. viewers what you mean by shadow ban. Shadow banning is they went through a conservatives on Twitter, puts some information out, long before they won't even know it's not going to all the followers people don't see it so it's just not people aren't seeing it on the twitter feed now think of this from facebook this is the problem i had too what they did to prager university mm -hmm. they, they banned when they talked about baseball or israel okay but the real concern i have today that i put out last week was google and the, your viewers have to understand 90 percent of all searches go through Google. Okay. And when you go to that second page of the information, 95% drop off. They control the information that we are seeing on the internet. And when you see the video that came forward yeah, the day I after the election, Yeah, I want to show it right now. I want to show it right now. It is Perfect. a, uh, 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 go ahead, guys. Can we put the sound on of what was going on at Google? Let's face it, most uh, people here are, uh, pretty upset and pretty sad for uh, because of the election. That was the first moment I really felt like we were going to lose. And it was this massive like kick in the gut that we were going to lose. And it was really painful. And we'll be very strong and vocal and, uh, you know, not just, you know, from a press standpoint or a PR standpoint, but actually working hard behind the scenes. And, and, and Congressman, that is the day after Donald Trump was elected. There is proof positive, if we had more time, that they hate conservatives, they hate Donald Trump. Can any conservative feel safe on, on uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and should they get information from Google? Well, that's exactly what we're working towards to stop the bias, because there's other concerns I have as well. You had what they called a silent donation, where they worked to actually get certain people to the polls to find out that they wanted Hillary to vote, what we saw there. But what's even more disturbing as an American, not just as a conservative as I am, Google stopped working with the U.S. military, but they worked with Russia and China. And it just came out. You know what they're doing in China? Oh, they created sick. a search engine for them so the Chinese government can spy on the people using. And you know the words they're searching for? Human rights, student protest. Isn't but they won't work with the U.S. government. But they worked with Russia to take down things that dealt with Putin. This Amazing. is what is wrong. The bias has got to stop. Remember uh, who, when Google started? Remember what their motto was? They just oh, yeah. recently took do it down. Do good. Do no evil. Do no evil. That's right. Don't do evil. Anyway, uh, Congressman Kevin McCarthy, thanks so much. I want to have you back on this. This is a really important issue. Thanks so much. And uh, joining me now to discuss the latest in the never-ending Mueller witch hunt, Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton, one of the only men in D.C. who can actually get answers for the American people. Tom, right. I'm tired of always giving you kudos. Because <laughs> I'm not but, tired of but, it. <laughs> we're so proud of you, Tom. Now listen, Thank now you. the latest that we have is, now with the leaking, we've got the Strzok and the Page emails. Clearly, uh, it, it, they, they are in a situation where where they are intentionally trying to leak. They now say, don't believe your lying eyes. We are trying to stop the leaks. Uh, and they then uh, actually pat each other on the back when they get negative stories about the president or Carter Page. Tell us what the latest is. Uh, they talk about a media leak strategy, and they're saying the media leak strategy is to stop media leaks, which obviously doesn't make any sense. 
And uh, there's news reports out uh, this weekend uh, saying that the leak of the dossier, which they're talking about over unclassified systems, by the way, the dossier at the time was classified according to the FBI and DOJ. They say the leak of the dossier in the beginning of the Clinton, uh, excuse me, the uh, Trump administration uh, to CNN and BuzzFeed, they said, well, maybe we can use this as a pretext to go out and interview people. So this leak strategy, it looks like, uh, that they know was happening. It was either coming out of their sister agencies, the FBI is acknowledged to be involved in stories, and of course they knew that uh, Christopher Steele was leaking information and Fusion GPS was leaking information. They didn't tell the FISA courts any of that. So they were spying on President Trump through Spygate. They were taking up the Trump uh, organizations and the Trump campaign's uh, phone records. Uh, they were targeting Carter Page with an illegal FISA warrant, targeting the Trump campaign, Trump with an illegal FISA warrant through this Page warrant. And as all part of that strategy was the leak, all of that classified investigative activity to the media to make Trump look bad. You know, I was laughing because this Google video, you could, you could have had the same video be run by the F, be uh, videotaped at the FBI. That was the reaction of the FBI to the Trump victory. And we see what they tried to do. And well, the resulting investigation is this Mueller special counsel operation. It's sick. It's sick. The whole thing is sick. And, and by the way, we have Carter Page coming up uh, as the next guest. But, but what I find so incredible is that uh, when this stuff is leaked, they actually come out, Peter Strzok, just like he did at the hearing. He says his lawyer comes out and says, oh, no, they were investigating uh, leaks and they wanted to stop them. But we now know that there that there are text messages to each other about congratulating each other, that they're getting articles written and the strategies working is consistent with the articles coming out. What what is coming next? I mean, how much worse is it going to get, Tom? Well, these are text messages that they found that supposedly had been deleted. So uh, there are emails that no one really has seen. They're, they're slow walking the release of emails to Judicial Watch separately. There's the rest of that FISA application that the president, by all accounts, is prepared to declassify. Yeah. It's just a matter of when, not if. Uh, it, it, it's getting worse in terms of the underlying corruption. And my view is the president needs to stop it either through executive authority on his own or seek some sort of court action to stop this Mueller investigation. You well, know, Judge, if all the cops involved in a prosecution before you <laughs> yeah. were doing this type of corruption, what would you tell the prosecutors? <laughs> Get your case out of here and investigate yeah. the investigators. I, I would absolutely do that. Anyway, Tom Fitton, thank you so much. And everyone, uh, the word is that, uh, you know, the declassification may happen soon. Anyway, Governor Mike Huckabee is still ahead. But next, is President Trump ready to declassify documents that could shed explosive news? light on the plot to frame him in the Russia investigation. I talk live next with one of the key figures in the Mueller investigations from the very beginning, Carter Page. He's here with us. Don't miss it. I'm Developing tonight, President Trump looks poised to finally declassify previously redacted sections of FISA applications against former Trump campaign associate Carter Page. Joining me now with his very unique perspective on all of this, including the Mueller investigation, the motivation behind it, former Trump campaign associate Carter Page himself. Uh, your first visit on Justice Carter. We, we are delighted to have you on. And so I want to start and move very quickly through this. Uh, you have been through so much. Uh, you know, we now know that the liars, the leakers, and the liberals in the DOJ, as well as the Department of Justice, uh, want to frame Donald Trump. And uh, uh, in order to impeach him. Do you wake up at night and say, this is a huge thing that's going on. How am I in the middle of this? You know, it's like I often say, Judge Janine, it's not about me, it's about fixing the disaster that this has created for our country. Well, how are not you only so tough? How are you so tough? I've, I have incredible support for people that have been doing a lot of work, including Tom Fitton and, you know, wow. Judicial Watch mm -hmm. and, you know, people in Congress like, uh, you know, Chairman Nunes and Chairman Grassley that have been doing so much to try to get the truth out there. And, you know, you and your team at Fox, it's been incredible. Okay. So, All right. Well, yeah. let me ask you this. 
Do, do you ever wonder why it was so easy for them to accuse you? And by the way, this has been going on for years. You're still walking around. But do you ever worry, like, if they were going to frame the president, maybe they'll frame me too? Oh, certainly they, they would definitely uh, try. And actually, uh, you know, um, Congressman Nunez, uh, sorry, uh, um, Congressman Schiff is constantly oh. throwing out words about me, you know, testifying incorrectly in front of Congress, et cetera. You know, I mean, it's just, it's so preposterous. So. All right, all right. Now, um, you know, Paul Manafort is put in solitary confinement 23 hours a day in an effort that I believe without a doubt was to break him. And right now uh, we realize that, you know, they will do anything to break someone in order to get at this president. But the Struck and the Page text now make it very clear that they were leaking information about a FISA warrant involving you that no one in this country has ever seen in a newspaper before. Should these guys go to jail? Judge Shanine, you know, it's funny. When I was in, uh, Devlin Barrett from the Washington Post right. had a big report about me uh, having various interviews with the FBI in March of 2017. Right. The following months, they kept uh, having these various leaks, which you're referring to. And I actually told them, similar to what uh, Mr. Manafort's attorney said yesterday, right. he had a lot of uh, security threats in various you know, he's concerned about his safety. That's exactly what I told the FBI that month as well. So, you know, it's it's really a terrible shame that instead of uh, thinking about safety of Americans, they're concerned about political agendas. So, well, but it's, it's really, interesting. Uh, I, I see your tweet from today and and uh, you say that you, too, have suffered death threats, Carter. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I alerted the FBI to this in uh, in March. And sure enough, you know, it was as you uh, as you correctly allude to, you know, liars, leakers, and liberals. You know, the following month, after I spent over ten hours, as was illegally disclosed to the Washington Post right. uh, later in the year, you know, sure enough, um, they uh, I actually had additional death threats after that. I'm you know, so when sorry. That, uh, came out. Carter Page. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. You know, thank keep you, the faith. Judge Hang Jean. on, the truth comes out. And Absolutely. a war of nasty words between the president and the former secretary of state over Iran. We'll hash it out next with the panel. Dan Bongino, Chris Hahn, ready to go at it when justice rolls on. You don't want to miss those two. <laughs>
My panel's ready to battle it out. And our Ray TV contributor, Dan Bongino, former aide to Chuck Schumer, radio show host uh, Chris Hahn, join me. All right, guys, so here's the deal. So you've got John Kerry having meetings with the uh, the, the foreign minister, Mohammad Zavad Zarif, uh, about the Iranian deal because he knows the president's going to can it. And three times they meet. Why isn't this a violation of the Logan Act, which prohibits an unauthorized American citizen from negotiating with a foreign government, Chris Hahn? Because he wasn't negotiating. And I've got to ask the president, did he get together with John Kerry in an attempt to sell more books? Because he has done more for John Kerry's book sales than John Kerry would have done by going on every single show okay. around the country. Let's so talk about no the Logan Act. Okay. I'm ready. Let's talk about it. He was pro it prohibits an unauthorized American citizen from negotiating with foreign governments. What is he doing with the prime minister of Iran? Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I, I don't know what I don't know what Chris is talking about. Again, listen, I, the Logan Act is crap. OK, it the is? Logan Act is garbage. Uh, it is. It's crap. No one's been successfully prosecuted using the Logan Act uh, in the history of the United States. Here's the problem, Judge. The Logan Act was the predicate for going after Lieutenant General Mike Flynn when Sally Yates was the Deputy yeah. Attorney General. Oh. So Chris cannot have it both ways. Pin him down on an answer right now. Well, Either the Logan <laughs> Act is crap, like he just said, oh, and I he will fully that. renounce and apologize to General me, Mike Flynn me, for this nonsense, or he's a total hypocrite. He's about to be exposed on your show. Chris, I am, I am an attorney. Yes. Mike Flynn was negotiating policy. Uh, John Kerry oh, met yeah. a former colleague Here we go. At, Look on at the sidelines of a world event, and they said, what do I do about Trump? And he said, wait him out. That is different than wait saying, a minute. Wait a minute. He this met him in hysterical. Munich. He met him in, uh, in addition to Munich, he met him in Norway. He meets him at the UN. Right. He even admits that he's talking to him about salvaging the Iran deal. That is negotiating with a foreign power. He was not negotiating. What was he doing? Just well, chatting? Not is this like Loretta Lynch on the tarmac yeah, getting me started? Look. They're chatting. Just like you and I, when we go to parties, people want to talk politics with us. People want to talk I am to not the Secretary of State talking Neither to is the he. Prime he Minister. He's not the Secretary of State He either. negotiated the deal. Go ahead, Dan, hit it. This uh, judge again. This is why people cannot stand I liberals. I don't mind Democrats. It's liberals like Chris. He what? Did you see the way he just snaked his way out of that? John hey. Kerry did exactly what the definition of what a, a negotiation would be. He was involved in a dispute with the United States over the Iran deal. He was unauthorized. He went overseas and told the Iranians, an enemy of the United States, what to do to battle back against Stop. the Trump administration. In other words, wait, said, wait, wait. What does Chris say? No, he that wasn't wait, negotiating. Wait, 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 I saw a polar bear the other day. I told him to wait it out. Oh, please, stop making a joke. Let me ask you a question. Why would Kerry be so invested in this Iran deal? Is he invested? Yes, in, is of he, course he's invested in it. He's the one who got it together. And he would violate the Logan Act and the Foreign Agents uh, Relations Act, by the way, which I guess doesn't apply to Democrats and only Republicans. You, you know, I, you know I Farrah? I think the president would do a do a good service by not making this a big deal and maybe calling Kerry in and getting some advice on what these Iranians oh, are thinking Oh, we don't right need now. Kerry's <laughs> advice. We <laughs> dumped him. Go ahead, Dan. Kerry, wait, Ke Judge, get John Kerry's advice. Chris, did you miss the election when your whole crew got their butts booted out of November office? What the hell do we coming, want this guy's brother. advice for? Wait, November wait, no, no, time out. Chris, coming. Judge, this is the same guy we're supposed to take advice on tax policy from John Kerry, who parks his boat in Rhode Island to avoid paying taxes. I mean, uh, Chris, not please, only that, spare us the nonsense. Boats, you want to talk about swift boat with John Kerry? Oh, now that's a low blow, yes. Judge. That's not a low no. blow. That's a Appropriate. No. He's got a low blow. Right Who now. is he to negotiate? And by the way, you know He's what I read? I read this guy, Foreign Minister Mohammed Zavad Zarif's son is the best man. Reports are at the wedding of John Kerry's daughter. What is the connection here? What is this? Why were they so desperate to make this deal with a, with a country well, that is I, determined to destroy I, I us? I think they wanted to stop them from getting a nuclear bomb. And oh, I really? Think that this, did that work? This, yeah, I, I, I think it did. Okay, I'll stay I out of it. it. Go I ahead. think it did judge. All right, Dan, go ahead. Uh, 
Judge, they put them on a pathway to a nuclear bomb. These people, did you miss the press conference by Netanyahu when the Israeli, brave Israeli spies took out a treasure trove of documents literally showing how the Iranians are still building this bomb? Chris, do you even watch this channel? Uh, I, do you watch I, the I news do. ever? Did you miss this whole lot. thing? And what about the Tans and Fordo when they were spending the centrifuges while they're negotiating with us and not even telling us they're spending the fences? I mean, they hey, lie, they lie, hey. they want to hey, kill us. Hey, look, I think that the Iranians have to be watched closely. And I How? We don't have the ability the under, under the allies. monitoring. We cannot monitor the development, their nuclear development. We're not in the pack. We, look, we pulled out of the pack now. We didn't pull out of the pack. The well, now we've pulled dumped us them. out of the pack. All right. And look, it was better than no pack. All right, go ahead. Dan, last word. You're now on yeah, yeah, Chris, exercise. We, when, we expect it, when we inspect the Iranian military facilities where they're most likely to build a bomb, we have to ask them their permission first. Yeah. And they provide like a guide for us. I'm sure they're going to bring us right to the nuclear bomb. Okay. Hey. My All gosh, right, you guys, guys are so dull. Yeah, you know, Chris Hahn, why does, it always end, why does it always end this way? Michael Moore's dire prediction for the 2020 election. Get ready to have a big laugh. Governor Mike Huckabee joins me next with that and more of the most outrageous things that we heard this week. You don't want to miss it. I can't wait to hear what the governor has to say myself. Welcome back to Justice. Liars, leakers, and liberals like Michael Moore trying to ramp up fake fear in America once again. Take a listen. Who's your choice? Who do you think would beat Trump? The honest answer to that is I don't even know if we're going to get to 2020 as a democracy. Really? Joining me now with reaction to that and so much more, former Arkansas governor, Fox News contributor, Mike Huckabee. What's he talking about? We don't need, he doesn't even know if we're going to get there. What does that mean? Well, you know, he may be right. Uh, it's rare for me to agree with Michael Moore, but here's why. Democrats refuse to accept election results. If you think about it, back in 2000, the previous Republican president, they didn't accept the election results. They right. said George Bush was Went not to legitimate. The Supreme They've Court. done the same thing with Donald Trump. The one thing that we can't survive as a country is when either side refuses to accept an election as the will of the voters. And Democrats do not accept election results unless they win. And then they not only accept it, but they use an election like a bulldozer to run over everybody. And they, instead of following the law, they just make it up as they go. And you know what is so amazing, Governor? Do you remember when Hillary Clinton or they, one of them came out and said, we've got to make sure that Donald Trump accepts the results results accepts the results ACC yes. you know uh, when when uh, uh, they thought she was going to win and they were so worried he wouldn't accept it that's because it's in their playbook but anyway let's go to uh, uh, right now we've got a uh, what is it Obama at an Ohio rally take a listen to this so just remember that when you hear these folks bragging about this economic miracle just remember when it started just remember when the ball got rolling. We, 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 we spent eight years pushing that boulder up the hill. We finally get to the top. It starts rolling down the hill. And then these folks come in and say, look at what we're doing. Look how, look at, they're standing there. They didn't break a sweat. Wow. Go ahead, Governor. Oh, I never knew how humble that President Obama was because he never bragged about his great economic miracle when he was in office. He never talked about the jobs, the deregulation. He never talked about the record unemployment for minorities. And now suddenly after Donald Trump delivers on the very things that he said he would do, uh, it was all because President Obama had laid all of the groundwork. This is incredible. I've, I've never seen anything quite like it. But the one thing I will remind you, do you remember when when President Trump, then candidate, was talking about what the economy was going to look like under him? President Obama said that's not going to happen. It would take a miracle. And he just completely pooed the idea. Well, the president, President Trump, promised it, delivered it. And now suddenly 
Barack Obama grabs the baton and jumps in front of the parade and says, I was leading it all the time. Well, it, it is pretty stunning. And I remember when he said, you know, carrier, it, the, you know, these jobs are never coming back. You know, it's all so pathetic. Yeah. But anyway, I want to go to another outrageous uh, uh, comment, and that is uh, uh, that I think we have it here. Kavanaugh, uh, interesting that Kavanaugh went to an all-boys school and had 65 women vouching for him. And Deborah Messing had said, uh, Brett Kavanaugh went to an all-boys school. Quickly, how quickly you can get 65 names. It's almost as though you knew about the accusation of sexual assault and tried to hide it, but got prepared with the names just in case. So Deborah Messing and then Chelsea Handler uh, all say that because he went to an all-boys school, he most probably assaulted a woman as Diane Feinstein came out and delivered this anonymous letter on the 11th hour that I did my open on tonight. Talk about that, Governor. Well, the, yeah, the big difference, uh, Judge, is that 65 women signed their names to it. They're willing to be accountable for it. Uh, the one person who is unknown and uh, completely anonymous with really some pretty sketchy accusations, we don't know who it is. We have no idea, but I'll tell you something we learned from all of this. If Judge Kavanaugh teaches and coaches girls basketball, uh, and then he goes and he gives women record numbers of jobs, then he's a potential sexual predator. If he doesn't, he's a sexist. But I'll tell you the one thing that the left would love him for, if he would wear a dress and hang out in women's <laughs> restrooms, that would be the one thing that they would right. suddenly applaud and say, he's fit for the court. Governor Mike Huckabee, thanks so much. And conservative silence by social media. We're talking more about it next. The attempt to silence conservatives on social media, on Google, and so on. We talked to Congressman McCarthy about it earlier, and it's a critical issue that we're going to continue to expose here on Justice. Now, my next guest had a controversial experience this week with Twitter, and he's here to tell us about it. Center for Immigration Studies Executive Director Mark Krikorian joins me now. All right, Mark, tell us what happened. We tried to promote some tweets. This is a paid ad. And some of them were accepted, some of them weren't. The ones they rejected had the words illegal alien or criminal alien in them. They weren't controversial otherwise. And so we wanted to know what was up. Was that the reason? They told us it was because of hateful content. Wow. And so only when we started to make a fuss and Fox News and The Hill and some other people called up Twitter, the reporters called them up, only then did they back off and say, oh, sorry, it was all a mistake. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't mean to do any of that. You, um, I don't believe it. Well, well, look, you know what the problem is, Mark? So many people are having content banned or not included or things. I spoke to someone today who said she had something on Google. Two years ago, it was up. Now it's down. She said she can't find it. You have, so what's happening is they are now changing our lexicon, the dictionary. And if hate speech, the word um, illegal alien is hate speech, why does Title Eight of the USC include the words criminal? criminal alien, unauthorized alien. I mean, these are words that are in our statutes, in our laws passed by Congress, and they now are comfortable taking it out. But I'm telling you, Mark, this is the beginning of their attempt to uh, 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 not only control our First Amendment free speech, but to stop us from speaking. And, you know, this is where Europe is. I mean, what can we do about this, Mark? All we can do is we got to push back all the time. This happened to us a few months ago with a couple of these tweets. We kind of let it slide. That was a mistake. We, everybody needs to push back every time this happens and make a fuss about it. Because when you turn the lights on, the cockroaches scatter. When you focus attention on their attempt to manipulate language, they will back off. At least, they, at least that's our experience. Okay, and you know what's interesting is that this week, uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, something that he said caught my attention. I was blown away. I read it twice. You know, he talked about Europe being for the Europeans and refugees should go home and rebuild. What's your reaction to what many perceive as a controversial statement and a statement that but for the Dalai Lama, I guarantee would have been expunged as hate content. Content. Well, it's the whole point to refugees is you protect them while there's 
a war or something going on so that they can go home and rebuild. Of course that's what they should be doing. A lot of the Syrians now want to be going home. Lebanon right. wants to send them home. The attempt to silence conservatives on social media, on Google, and so on. We talked to Congressman McCarthy about it earlier, and it's a critical issue that we're going to continue to expose here on Justice. Now, my next guest had a controversial experience this week with Twitter, and he's here to tell us about it. Center for Immigration Studies Executive Director Mark Krikorian joins me now. All right, Mark, tell us what happened. We tried to promote some tweets. This is a paid ad. And some of them were accepted, some of them weren't. The ones they rejected had the words illegal alien or criminal alien in them. They weren't controversial otherwise. And so we wanted to know what was up. Was that the reason? They told us it was because of hateful content. Wow. And so only when we started to make a fuss and Fox News and The Hill and some other people called up Twitter, the reporters called them up, only then did they back off and say, oh, sorry, it was all a mistake. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't mean to do any of that. You, um, I don't believe it. Well, well, look, you know what the problem is, Mark? So many people are having content banned or not included or things. I spoke to someone today who said she had something on Google. Two years ago, it was up. Now it's down. She said she can't find it. You have, so what's happening is they are now changing our lexicon, the dictionary. And if hate speech, the word um, illegal alien is hate speech, why does Title VIII of the USC include the words criminal? criminal alien, unauthorized alien. I mean, these are words that are in our statutes, in our laws passed by Congress, and they now are comfortable taking it out. But I'm telling you, Mark, this is the beginning of their attempt to uh, 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 not only control our First Amendment free speech, but to stop us from speaking. And, you know, this is where Europe is. I mean, what can we do about this, Mark? All we can do is we got to push back all the time. This happened to us a few months ago with a couple of these tweets. We kind of let it slide. That was a mistake. We, everybody needs to push back every time this happens and make a fuss about it. Because when you turn the lights on, the cockroaches scatter. When you focus attention on their attempt to manipulate language, they will back off. At least, they, at least that's our experience. Okay, and you know what's interesting is that this week, uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, something that he said caught my attention. I was blown away. I read it twice. You know, he talked about Europe being for the Europeans and refugees should go home and rebuild. What's your reaction to what many perceive as a controversial statement and a statement that but for the Dalai Lama, I guarantee would have been expunged as hate content. Content. Well, it's the whole point to refugees is you protect them while there's a war or something going on so that they can go home and rebuild. Of course, that's what they should be doing. A lot of the Syrians now want to be going home. Lebanon right. wants to send them home. 